Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you. Uh, we are so grateful for you joining us here um, for another Sabbath worship. Um, have you had a good week? Talk to us. We want to talk to you. Have you had a good week? How are you feeling? Are you in good health? Um, are you doing well? Are you smiling? Are you warm? I don't know where you're watching from, but here in Cleveland, it's been, it's been a little snow, it's been a little rain, there's been some sun, but there's been a lot of snow. Uh, so anyways, we just want to say welcome and happy Sabbath. We're super excited that you have chosen to join us this afternoon, and we believe that God has a blessing for you. We want to encourage you to share this. Why? Because we know that there's somebody out there who might be strolling down your timeline, who's looking for something to do, who might not even be looking for something to do. And because you choose to share it, uh, you might be able to help somebody experience Jesus today. And that's what it's all about. We just want people to be able to experience Jesus. So if you want someone to be able to experience Jesus, we um, invite you to join us in sharing. I have shared it, I believe. I'm going to make sure that I did that. So we want to make sure that you share. And we want to invite you to go on ahead and drop a drop a hello in the chat. Let's talk. Uh, today we have some some guests and some some not guests and some family. We have some people here with us. Can I bring in my my people? Can we all talk? How how are y'all sure. feeling? To, how y'all feeling this afternoon? Good, Pastor. Doing all right. Ooh. Praise the Lord, Minister Willie. Doing how, good. How, doing how, good. Uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. Good to be back. I'm excited. Amen. I'm glad to be in the number. I'm oh. glad to be on the line too. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Pastor Cannon. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to have a good time uh, this this um, afternoon. We're going to have a good time this afternoon. So we're going to have y'all come and, on in. Uh, and, and just piggyback on what on what Pastor Regina said. And please, mm -hmm. you all can, can do us a favor. We ask you every week, and we're going to ask you every week that, um, that we continue to be on here. But when you come on, please, you know, say happy Sabbath. It's good to have you here. But if you can hit that share button button that's that's the best thing you can do for us at this time if you can hit that share button and and share that on your timeline so that we can get as many people on here to receive what the lord has given to us as possible that would be great amen <laughs> all right so how y'all feeling y'all know sorry this is our fellowship time this is our fellowship let's 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 fellowship let's you know we have to it's been a while, you know, we are all in different places. We want to say welcome also to everyone who is listening. There are many people that are listening right now. We just want to say, even though you can't see us, we, we see you in the spirit and we say thank you. <laughs> we just want to say hello to you and happy Sabbath as well. Um, how y'all feeling? I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, Pastor Cannon, I don't know about you, but the but three of us, we're in Cleveland and it's, uh, what, yesterday was April 17th and it snowed all day long. It did. Uh, <laughs> It, it didn't really didn't really stick much, but just seeing snow this late in the game is just not sitting well with my spirit. So I, I don't know how I am right now, Pastor Regina. I'm just being honest. Well, I just want to bring my my testimony into uh, the form, and I, I'm glad that my testimony is not like yours. Uh, <laughs> in Virginia, um, we don't have any any snow, any of those problems going on. Uh, uh, we are blessed and highly favored out here. Uh, it's about 70, 75 degrees, and I'm, I'm oh, glad. Man. Uh, to be right here. And I'm also thankful that I've got my, my Bethany family, uh, as well as the Calvary family on the line with us uh, uh, today. This is uh, indeed just a, a good time for us all. Wow. Amen. Amen. So yes, praise the Lord. This is exciting. Uh, we, I'm a little, I guess the word is jealous, envious. Of, uh, <laughs> but you know what? I can't, let me tell you how I can't really complain. You want to know why? Because um, it snowed outside. But I didn't go outside. Okay, come, somebody come on. Somebody said, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I was okay. I was okay with the social distancing yesterday because I said, well, I looked outside and I said, I was going to go for a run, Nate. I said, I got to go for a run. I said, and, I, and I looked outside and I, I, I looked out the window and I said, oh, I'm going to run down to, to the steps. I'm going to run down the steps in the house. <laughs> I'm going to run down here to this basement and we go, we're going to do a little workout down there. All right, we're going to do a little yeah. workout down there. Um, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, 
super excited for everyone to be here. We just want to see just a little bit how how are you guys doing? I see okay, happy Sabbath. Someone said it snowed here the other morning too. Oh my, Kim. All right, we're here wherever she is. All right, Pastor Cannon. Someone says hello, hello from the Melu family. All right, let me see how else everybody else. Yes, snow in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Trying to see how y'all doing. Nobody told me how they're doing. I'm trying to take check our posts right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody answered my question. Dorisha in Dayton, Ohio, says she's blessed. So she, she oh, well, praise the Lord. Someone is blessed, blessed, blessed. Okay, I missed that one. I didn't see that. All right. Well, to everyone else who's still here, if you wouldn't mind, just we just trying. To, I'm just trying to check your pulse. I got to keep checking in with you um, to see how how you are feeling. Some may be blessed. Some may be tired. I mean, you know, let's be honest in the chat. Let's be honest in the chat. <laughs> Be honest in the chat. I just saw um, that uh, one of our, our members here at Bethany said that where she was at, it snowed. Oh my! Uh, but I, I'm glad that didn't come by my house. So that was just. I was say, where, where you at? Pat? Where you at? <laughs> yeah, that's something that happened out in Palmyra, out there. But uh, it ain't happening here in Charlottesville. <laughs> oh man from, uh, Stacy Kimberly also in Dayton Ohio hey sister Stacy she says she is wonderful in Jesus all right yeah, we, we're happy about that sister Linda Bozeman said blessed uh all are well we're happy about praise that praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord I will take this time I want to take this time uh before I pass it over to Pastor Drew um, and I want to encourage y'all to move your body. Somebody say, move my body. All move. right. I'm going to encourage you off the top. Move my body. All right. Uh, now, I, let me give you, I'm going to tell you what to move. I don't don't because I don't want y'all going here and running here. The pastor said, you know, nothing wrong. Now, what I'm saying, though, is that it is very important for us to get moving during this time. It's real easy for many of us that are not moving as much as we usually do and going out to the store. And, you know, some of us, I mean, I'm telling on myself, but the way I would do groceries and the way I would shop. I mean, I was in the store every other day, you know, I just go and pick up some bananas, go and <laughs> do what I got to do in and out. But now it's kind of like you go to the store one time, you just got to get everything, you know? So some of our things that we're not doing as much, right? And so we want to encourage everyone to get moving. Um, our church, Grace Community, is doing something called Move My Body. We're doing a movement. And um, let me tell you, my health ministries leader, Nate uh, and Renee, she reached out to me and she, she said, we started this about two weeks ago. And she said, Pastor, um, I haven't seen you post anything. And I said, uh-huh, praise the Lord. Um, uh, I said, praise the Lord. And I, you know what I had to do? I had to uh, I had to confess. I said, yeah, I haven't posted anything because I, I hadn't done anything. Oh my. <laughs> I, had no, I had nothing to post, all right? I had nothing to post. So <clears throat> uh, this week I decided I'm joining this movement. And so I want to encourage everyone to get to moving. Because I think one of the reasons I'm stopping to, to share this and make sure I want to put it is because for me, I had to make that decision because it helps mentally. It helps with my, it helps with everything. You know, it's a full thing. It helps just bring up with your spirits. And once you get moving, it just changes your attitude. It will shift, shift your mindset. Yeah. It will shift yeah. your emotions and it will keep you stable. And so I want to encourage somebody who's out there that might not, you know, be doing the best. I promise you, if you get moving, it will help you. And so I just wanted to encourage someone um, of that. Good morning, everyone, once again, um, or good afternoon, rather, and, and happy Sabbath to, to each of you, wherever you are, are, are joining us from. Uh, I know we have a, a few churches represented here uh, just by the speakers, and so Grace Community, good morning uh, to you all, our sister church, uh, Temple of Praise, my family, good to see you all, love and miss you, uh, Bethany and Calvary, uh, my, my, my other family, I love and miss you all as well, and we're happy that you've come to, to support your pastor and the rest of us also. And the other churches that are represented here, we just want to say welcome once again to each one of you. And so we want to go ahead and get started today. I'm excited. Uh, so if you've been if you've been rocking with us for the last few weeks, then then you know that we've been in this uh, awesome, powerful series uh, entitled "I Hate It Here." Yeah. I hate it here. And 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 I I pray that you've been blessed. I know I've been blessed, uh, Pastor Regina Willie. Uh, I know we've been blessed. And we got Pastor Cannon with us here as well. I'm going to get to him in just a moment. Uh, but but we pray that you've been blessed by what the Lord has given us up to this point. And so we're moving on today. And, and our, our topic 
for today is a very important one, and we're hoping you can go with us on this one. Our topic for today is, I hate it here, but somebody needs me. Oh, that's, that's good right there, y'all. That, that's good right there. So if, if, you're, if you're with me, uh, you may not know where we're going with it yet, but if you can just type in the comment section, uh, somebody needs me. Just type that in the comment section so we'll know you're here with us. That's what we're focusing on today. I hate it here, but somebody needs me. So before we get into our, our word, um, I want to have uh, our first message today. Just want to have a word of prayer and, and mention a couple of things to you, and then we'll get started. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much just for the gift of another Sabbath. We thank you, Lord, um, that the sun is shining. It may not be as warm as we want as we want it, but the sun is at, at the very least shining. We're grateful for all of the individuals around this country, yea, even around the world, who have given up their time just to be here to fellowship with us. And so be with us as we spend these moments with you as our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to get into this a little later and, and go into it with a little more detail a little later in, in our service today. But we do just want to, to start off by just mentioning and I guess reminding to us, and this is wherever your church family is, of, of our responsibility, right, even in these times, to be faithful in supporting the mission and the work of, of God's church during this time. And you know what I'm talking about. This is, this is a time where, or, or this is an opportunity where each of us has uh, the privilege of being able to partake, and that is in being faithful in our tithe and offering. And so I just want to mention a couple of those ways by which we can be faithful in our tithe and offering, and then we'll come back to it a little later in the service. And so I know for, for my church family, and you all know we've all been rolling a few weeks now, that you can go to Adventist Giving, and you can find our church and return tithe and offering that way. And I know that for Pastor Regina and Pastor Cannon, um, that is much the same, um, going to, uh, to Adventist Giving and finding your church and then giving that way. Uh, also, as you can see on the screen, uh, we also have uh, a cash app account where we can also return our tithe and offering. And you see our, our um, um, you see the, the, our handle right there, a dollar sign T-O-P family. And so that's the other way that, that we can give as, as well. So we just want to encourage us during this time just to be faithful, y'all. And I know it's not always easy, um, but just to be faithful, because I just believe, call me crazy, I just believe that when we honor God, he honors us tenfold. And that's my belief. Uh, Pastor Virginia, is there anything you want to, uh, to mention at this time concerning that before we move? Nope, the same, same thing that you said. Um, you can give via Adventist Giving. Um, or you can also use the Cash App. Uh, that's the Cash Shine Grace Community SDA. Um, and you see it right there. Uh, you can text to give. The number is there, 216-298-1495. Um, or you can mail it into our office with that address that is right there. Or for the easiest way, you can go to readysetgrace.com and you will find all the ways that you can give right there on our website. All right, all right. Listen, y'all, I am beyond excited uh, today, right? Because we, we about to take this thing to another level today. I know you've gotten used the last couple of weeks uh, to seeing my face, to seeing Pastor Regina's face, to seeing Willie's face. Um, we wanted to shake things up just a little bit today. We, we, don't, we want to keep you guessing. We don't want y'all to just know what's going to happen when we come on here on, on Sabbath. And so if you, if you look on this screen, then you see... Um, that there's another individual, a new individual that is on here with us today. And, and, and we're excited. I'm excited because uh, this is my brother right here, Pastor Renee Cannon. And he is doing some awesome things in Virginia. Uh, can we shout out Virginia? I know we got Bethany and Calvary on here. Uh, and, and, and these are my former churches. So I got love for Charlottesville and Gordonsville. Y'all come on here, just type in the comments. Uh, Pastor Cannon, we're with you. Just say that. Pastor Cannon, we're with you. And let him know that he has your support. I want to just put a shameless plug in here uh, for last year and just give a big shout out to uh, our Virginia Cavaliers for bringing home that title. Just want to go ahead and shout that out as well. Don't, don't hate. Don't hate. The Lord, the Lord's been good to, to, to Virginia. So I'm excited about having Pastor Renee Cannon here with us. As I mentioned, for the last few years, he's been pastoring uh, the Bethany uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Charlottesville, Virginia, and the Calvary. SDA Church in Gordonsville, Virginia. He is married, a, a one-woman man. Can we say amen for that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, he's a very educated brother. 
And, um, and he loves God and he loves people. So I'm gonna get out your way and I'm gonna let Pastor Cannon do what God has told him to do and say a prayer in your hearts. All right. Uh, definitely appreciate you um, with welcoming me on the line, um, especially uh, seeing uh, how instrumental uh, your friendship has been uh, with me while I'm in this di district. Uh, I also thank uh, uh, Pastor Regina Johnson for allowing me to um, uh, participate and, and, and just hop on the line for a, a few moments um, with you all. Um, and and I'm going to just have a word of prayer and I'm going to go straight uh, in, into the word that we have today. Um, let us pray. Uh, Father in heaven, Lord, we just ask uh, in this moment uh, that you would open our hearts, that you would open our ears, Lord, and that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'd like to draw um, your attention um, to uh, two passages of scripture. I've got um, a sermonic text uh, that I'd like to lift up, and I have a support text as well. The sermonic text is going to come to us uh, from Acts chapter 1, and I'll read verses 6 through 11. Uh, and the support text is from Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. I'll read first from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. The Bible says there, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently upon up into the skies he was going. Then suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Uh, now, if you're, you're still with me in your Bibles, uh, I'm asking that you would go over to Daniel chapter 7, uh, verses 13 and 14. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. The Bible says, in, in my vision, this is Daniel the prophet speaking, at night I looked and there before me was one like a son of man. Coming with the clouds of heaven, he appeared the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power for all nations and peoples of every uh, language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Uh, and, and, and the title I want to I wanna lift up today is, is The Revolution uh, continues. I, I'd appreciate if somebody would just type that out, the revolution, uh, it continues. When I come to this idea about um, the revolution, first of all, um, for how we look at Jesus, uh, because many of us, when we think about uh, Jesus, especially from a Western perspective, you know, we have this uh, died in the wool, uh, anti-activist, nationalist, uh, a supporter of the state. That's how we think about Jesus. Uh, 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 but contrarily to that, his contemporaries did not believe that to be so. And the reason they didn't believe Jesus was this type of uh, uh, anti-activist nationalist uh, supporter of the state is because when Jesus came, uh, he, he didn't come calling himself the Prince of Peace. He didn't come calling himself uh, the Lamb of God or the Rose of Sharon. But when Jesus came, he called himself the Son of Man. Uh, now, this title, the Son of Man, it might sound benign to, to you and I, uh, uh, but the people that walk with Jesus, they knew exactly what he was talking about. Because this language of the Son of Man, it comes from Daniel uh, chapter 7. And there the prophet Daniel, uh, uh, he has this vision of four beasts that, that represented kingdoms of the earth uh, that would emerge from the sea. Uh, uh, the first of these beasts was the winged lion. Uh, the second of them was a carnivorous bear with three ribs in his mouth. The, the third of them was a, a, a leper with four heads and uh, uh, four wings. And the fourth was one that was only called dreadful and terrible. Uh, for this 
beast had 10 heads and 10 horns upon each head. It had iron teeth and the Bible says it devoured uh, uh, all that it encountered and it pulverized or pummeled the rest of the remains into the ground. But though these beasts were frightful and fearful, the Bible speaks of one that's called the Ancient of Days. I wish I had somebody with me today because the Bible says that the Ancient of Days overturns and overthrows these kingdoms and then cedes the power to the Son of Man. Uh, then the Son of Man is the one that rules and reigns with the saints of the Most High God for all of eternity. This is how the apostles thought of Jesus. He is the Son of Man. Now, 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 as uh, they think of him as the Son of Man, we, we just dealt with Passion Week last week. Jesus has been crucified. Jesus has been laid in the tomb, but Jesus rises from the tomb on the third day. So when they see Jesus as the son of man, they not only see somebody who is able to overthrow the Roman empire, the ones who have colonized and occupied their people, uh, but they also see in Jesus somebody that cannot be stopped. Because in Jesus, they see uh, uh, that death could not hold him, the grave could not control him, and therefore there was nothing that is able to stop the revolution. I wish somebody would understand today that, that nothing can stop Jesus from operating in your life. But look what, what happens in the text. They now come to him because he's risen, and they're asking him about this revolution. They say, they say uh, Jesus, uh, uh, will you at this time uh, restore unto us the kingdom of Israel? Uh, uh, and, and Jesus, when he answers it, he kind of uh, pushes them back just a little bit. And he says, it is not for you to know or to understand the times and dates that the father uh, has put into his hands. But then he says this, he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, 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 and when he says this thing that you shall receive power, uh, uh, I can see him getting a little bit hype at this time because we're talking about a revolution. Uh, uh, and they understand that there is no power like Holy Ghost power, uh, uh, because it was the Holy Ghost power uh, uh, that fell upon Saul and uh, uh, allowed him to defeat the Ammonites. Uh, uh, it was the Holy Ghost power uh, uh, that fell upon Gideon when he took that army of 300 and overthrew 135,000. It was the Holy Ghost power that came upon Samson and allowed him to destroy 1,000 Philistines with a with a with a, a, a jawbone of a donkey and very Therefore, they knew if they had the Holy Ghost power, then surely they would overthrow the Roman Empire. <laughs> I can just see them there uh, almost right now, uh, 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 reaching for their hips and, and grabbing their swords or their straps. Uh, uh, I, I see somebody looking at me strange, Drew, uh, but you know back then they used to keep that thing on them. Uh, and I know they used to keep that thing on them uh, uh, because in the Garden of Gethsemane, you remember Peter pulled that thing out and he cut somebody's ear off. Uh, I can see them riling up and getting hyped for this thing, but, but, but Jesus then lets them know that they have misinterpreted the power uh, because he's letting them know now that they didn't have this power for war, but he gave them the power to witness. The Bible says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you shall receive this power, but this power will give you the authority to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in all the, well, the, the uttermost parts of the world or the ends of the earth uh, as the NIV states it. Now, this idea of being a witness, to, to, to be a witness uh, it meant to be in the book of Acts. It describes witnessing uh, uh, as bearing a testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when you bear the testimony of all that Jesus has done, somebody should start bearing a, a testimony now. When you, when you bear the witnesses of his, his miracles, of his wonders and his signs, what it would cause the people to do is to join the Christian movement. So, so what Jesus is in essence telling them is he was giving them power to become recruiters for this revolution. Now he says that you can do this, uh, 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 I need you to do it in Jerusalem and Judea. Uh, uh, and those things were fine because Jerusalem and Judea were within, located within the comfortable confines of Israel. He says, you are to be my witness also in Samaria. Uh, and now while this might've been a little bit touchy, uh, 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 the Samarians were almost like their, their, their relatives. So uh, uh, they didn't have a problem going there. But then Jesus says, you need to be my witnesses all the way to the ends of the earth. Uh, uh, now, when Jesus says this, uh, it's a sort of euphemism. 
Now, 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 a euphemism is is something you say to to, to cover up uh, uh, for something that might be received more harshly. Uh, it's like when we, we we speak to one another, we don't like to say uh, uh, people died, so we say uh, uh, they passed away or they have gone on or they have gone to sleep in Jesus. And uh, uh, and and what he is doing at this point in time uh, uh, is he is using a, a, a euphemism or a cover up because uh, of the harsh thing he was actually bringing to pass was that the ends of the earth is to be interpreted as taking the gospel to the Roman Empire. We know that because the culmination or the climax of the book of Acts is when Paul takes the gospel to Rome. And what Jesus is saying is, I want you to take the gospel to your enemies. Uh, now, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if anything that makes me more uneasy than to become a revolutionary recruiter for the enemy. Uh, uh, Cause if there's anything you don't wanna do is you don't wanna recruit the enemy to join your revolution. We've learned this lesson time and time again from history. I know you've heard of Gabriel Prosser who was from right here in Virginia. Uh, 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 and history records that he was to lead a slave rebellion. He had over 1000 people that were ready to go and overthrow the capital of Richmond, Virginia, uh, uh, but he he never got a chance to, to go in this battle. And the reason he didn't is because he had recruited an enemy to join his revolution. There was a slave called Pharaoh that goes off and tells his master of the plans that he has. And as a result of this, uh, uh, Gabriel Prosser winds up being hanged. He and 24 other co-conspirators. You never want to recruit an enemy to join your revolution. So why would Jesus tell them you need to now witness to this Roman Empire? Uh, looking at what Jesus is, is telling them, uh, 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 we, we, we find that the reason Jesus tells them this is because he needs them to understand that the revolution was never about the supremacy of man, but it was always about the supremacy of God. And when you come to understand that it's about the supremacy of God, uh, 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 then and only then uh, 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 will things in life begin to change. Uh, 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 he wants them to know that when they convert those in the Roman Empire, when Jesus is supreme, uh, there is no more colonization and occupation. Uh, when Jesus is supreme, there is no much such thing as racism and sexism. When Jesus becomes the supreme, there is no uh, uh, wage inequality and disparity. When Jesus becomes supreme, uh, all of these things are gone away. Uh, I'm going to take this to our theme, and I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, I hate it here, but somebody needs it. Me needs me. Uh, 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 the apostles absolutely hated it in the Roman Empire. Uh, they hated their conditions. They hated how they were being treated, but they were needed there uh, in order to witness to these people that they might be saved. Um, and, and you might find yourself uh, uh, in places that you hate. Uh, you may find yourself in positions that you hate. You may find yourself around people, if you be honest, that you may hate these folk too. Somebody say mercy. Uh, but the reason that God has you in these places, uh, uh, in these positions, and around these people is because he wants to use you in order to save somebody. I'll use this quarantine for an example. You may hate this position that you have uh, right now in quarantine. We're stuck uh, behind these walls, but God wants to use this time that you might minister to your family. He wants you to begin to tell your spouse, to, to begin to tell your children, to begin to tell somebody else about Jesus, or perhaps you're home alone. You can use this time to send out some texts. You can use this time to even share this uh, uh, web webinar to your friends and to your family. He wants to use this opportunity opportunity to get you to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm going to get out of here. The text says this, Nate. The text says that after, after, you know, I, I'm going to go into my imagination, but after they said all these things, you know, uh, the apostles just stand there, I imagine, just stunned with their mouths open, you know, and, and, and Jesus doesn't even give an explanation, <laughs> but the Bible says that a cloud comes down, <laughs> And, and, and just picks Jesus up. He doesn't give an explanation and takes him off uh, into the heavens. Uh, and then two men uh, are, are robed in white. And they, they come and say, why do you marvel? They say, for, for, for this same Jesus uh, uh, that was taken up in the cloud, he's coming back down the same way. Uh, 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 this is an illusion 
uh, uh, to what happens in Daniel chapter 7 uh, and in verse 13. Because if you can remember back, the, the, the four beasts, which represented the kingdoms of the earth, they would rule and reign over people, but then the Ancient of Days would come and overthrow them. Uh, uh, the Bible lets us know that the Ancient of Days then seized the power to the Son of Man. And then the Son of Man uh, 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 comes back down in the clouds. And what that lets us know today is that we do not witness in these places that we hate for no reason. Uh, 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 we do not uh, uh, send his word out in void, uh, but when we do this, uh, we shall all be joined in the glorious kingdom of heaven when the revolution is over, uh, and we shall all be uh, 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 there amongst the Son of Man. Uh, uh, so the word I want to offer you today uh, is to continue to witness. Though you may hate it uh, in the position that you are, though you may hate the place that you are, though you may have some disdain for some of the people you are around, there is a reward in the end for the revolution shall be drawn to a close and we shall be with the son of man. May the Lord bless you and keep you on this day. Amen.
you are a reporter to me. I need you to survive. Oh my. Listen, y'all, listen, y'all. That was only speaker number one and song number one. And listen, I, I'm glad I wasn't shown on the screen when, when, when Pastor Cannon was, was preaching and when, when Willie was singing, because I was spinning around in my chair about to break my laptop. Lord have mercy. Uh, my God, that was a strong word and, and an awesome reminder and song um, that we need. Uh, that we need each other to survive. So uh, I do just want to shed some light once again on a very important segment of our worship, y'all. We, you know, we're not just gathered here to, to to enjoy music and to enjoy the preached word of God, but we also have a responsibility to make sure that we are holding one another accountable to what God has called us to do. I remember uh, maybe about a year or so ago, I was on Instagram. And I came across a picture, just a regular image or meme when I was on social media. And the picture was a, a simple picture that was a display of, of Jesus, or I guess how that, um, how the artist sees Jesus. And Jesus was in a bent down position. He was kneeling down in front of a little girl. Maybe some of you have even seen this image. And as Jesus is knelt down in front of this little girl, if you look at the girl, in her hand, she's holding really close and tightly uh, to a small little teddy bear. You can see the look on her face as Jesus is knelt down in front of her and he has one hand extended to her as if to say that he wants her to give him that little teddy bear that she obviously loves so much and is clinging to so dearly. You can see the pain in her face as she is sad and downcast because for whatever the reason, I don't know how long she had the teddy bear. Maybe she you know, grew up uh, all her life to that point with that teddy bear. But the point is she did not want to let it go, even though Jesus was asking her for it. And, and unbeknownst to her, here's, here's what made the, the image so powerful to me, that unbeknownst to her, because she could not see it, um, as Jesus was reaching out one hand for that little teddy bear that she was clinging to so tightly, in his other hand, hidden behind his back, was another brand new teddy bear that was so much bigger than the one that she was holding onto. And, and if she had just given up that small teddy bear, then lo and behold, uh, there was this huge blessing that Jesus wanted to exchange that small teddy bear with that she knew nothing about. And it makes me think about how we respond to God in obedience or disobedience in terms of our tithe and offering. Now, however we feel about this thing, God's word is clear and there's an expectation that we would be faithful. And I shudder to think about how many uh, gigantic and amazing blessings that Jesus is waiting just to unleash in your life and unleash in, in my life, but we're holding so tightly to what we have, whether because we don't know how we're going to make ends meet without it, or, or we earn this for ourselves, so I don't feel like I should have to give it up, and, and it is our unwillingness to let go of what it is that Jesus has his hand out reaching out to us for, and he's just waiting to just open up, the Bible says, the windows of heaven right, and pour us out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive it. Now, now I want to make one thing clear. That, that we do not return tithe and offering because we want big blessings from God. We return tithe and offering because God commanded that we, uh, that we return tithe and offering. And it's, it's an obedience thing and it's tied to the faith that we have in him. But it's no secret that God just has a habit of taking care of his children. That he just, he just has this, this love and desire to lavish blessings on you. So, so here's my word for us today as we consider this idea of tithe and offering. Uh, let's not be uh, like that little girl that, that, that clings so tightly to what God is asking us to, to give up as it pertains to our tithe and offering. And just know that if we are able to be obedient and if we are able to be faithful, not only can God and will God take care of us, but he said, I'm gonna open up blessings that is beyond your capacity. 
And so we outlined some of those ways by which you can faithfully return your, your tithe and offering. Um, and, and you can see um, on the screen in just a moment right here to my Temple of Praise church family. And I want to commend you all. You've been doing a great job and being faithful during this tough time. Uh, but we do just want to highlight those ways once again by which we can continue to be faithful in our tithe and offering. And I'm sure I'm speaking for uh, for Pastor Regina um, and, and they'll put their, their slide up in just a moment as well as Pastor Cannon. Uh, when we say that there is very much an expectation that we will be faithful to what God has expected of us, knowing that God has a habit of taking care of his people. Uh, Pastor Regina, was there anything that you wanted to add to this at this time? Amen. Amen. Uh, I think, uh, nope, you said everything. I think, uh, praise the Lord. Um, and yes, you did say thank you for being faithful. So yes, to Grace Community, I say the same thing. Um, you know, thank you to, for being faithful and let's continue uh, to do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and on behalf of, of Pastor Cannon, uh, the mighty preacher, that's trying to shut down our live stream. Um, I just want to, to mention to, to Bethany and, and Calvary as well, um, uh, a thank you from your pastor, Pastor Cannon, for, for your faithfulness during this time also. I just want to have a, a quick word of prayer um, just as we, um, as we culminate this, uh, this moment that we've spent in, in tithe and offering and being faithful to God. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of being able to be obedient and faithful to you. Lord, we thank you that not all of us have, have lost income or have lost job. Now, we know it's tough. Some people have had to, um, to be home on leave without pay. Others have, have, been, have lost their, their jobs or positions. Um, Lord, I pray that for those of us who are, are able, that we would continue to be faithful, um, even if we might not know what tomorrow is going to look like or even next month. And if anybody watching this has not been faithful up to this point for whatever reason but i pray through your holy spirit that you would convict them and that you would comfort them and let them know uh, that you own the cattle on a thousand hills there's nothing that they could give up that you cannot replenish tenfold take care of your children lord is our prayer in jesus name amen and amen family family we're gonna we're gonna keep this ball rolling um we're always blessed to have a uh, minister psalmist, pastor, Dr. Willie McMillan, all, all wrapped in one, right? Um, he already kicked us off and started us off with, with that praise and worship. I'm going to bring him back on to share another song with us, and then we'll get right into our next message. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus is the answer for the world today. Apart from there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Apart from there. No other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. For the world today, above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above there's no other. Jesus 
is his way. Above him there's no other. Jesus is a way. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Jesus is the answer. Listen, isn't that the song uh, that we needed to hear during times like this? Uh, Willie's singing all my all, all my favorite songs that uh, that I know I grew up on, grew up singing. Uh, Jesus is the answer for for the world today. And we're grateful for uh, for that. I want to turn your attention, uh, family and, and, and friends, to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 19. Um, you'll see it on, on the screen in, in just a moment, but if you want to just follow along with it, I'm going to read in your hearing. I don't have the, um, the verses all written out on the slides, so just have the text right there for your reference. Luke chapter 19 and verses 1 through 10. I just want to read that in, in your hearing as we consider this topic. I hate it here. Uh, I'm not liking this all the time. I hate it here, but somebody needs me. And so the word of God says in Luke chapter 19, uh, beginning at verse one, it says, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Somebody say it's good to have some money. And he sought to see who Jesus was. He was the issue y'all, but could not see who Jesus was because of the crowd for he was of short stature. We got any short people on the, on the live stream today say it's okay to be short. That's all right. Uh, but he was short in stature, so he couldn't see Jesus. So he ran ahead, and here's what he did, y'all. Uh, he climbed up into a sycamore tree just to see Jesus, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and he saw Zacchaeus. And here's what he said to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, brother. Make haste and come down, for today I'm coming to stay at your house. Man, I wish I was Zacchaeus. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying he's gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Uh, who's thankful that Jesus still eats with sinners and stays with sinners? Oh, oh my. Then Zacchaeus, uh, verse 8, then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, Lord, uh, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone, my God, by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Zacchaeus said, listen, I'm so convicted and moved by God that I'm not going to just give you what I took from you. I'm going to put some sauce on that thing and, and, and give it to you. I'm going to restore it fourfold. Verse nine, and Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, finally, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. I hate it here, but somebody needs me. Uh, on the screen, you'll see um, depicted one of, in my opinion, one of the most exciting basketball players to watch in the history of the game. I see my brother Willie with a thumbs, thumbs up. Uh, uh, Pastor Renee got, got his hand, he, he, he swam from side to side, right? Uh, and Pastor Regina don't watch sports, so she ain't with me on that one. But, uh, but, but, but Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson is or, or was one of the most exciting basketball players to watch. He's one of my favorites of, of all time. And there's a, a lot of different reasons why I like him. One of, one of the reasons is because we come from the same place. He's born and raised in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, that's where I was born, still that family there. Uh, and he was such, anybody that knows anything about him knows that he was just a pure athlete, right? W whatever you needed done, he could do. In fact, his junior year in high school, School. Not only did he lead his basketball team to win the, the state championship, but he led his football team to win the state championship as well. I mean, just a pure athlete. And anybody you ask would tell you this man had the heart of a champion, regardless of if he won uh, the, the championship or not. He had the heart of a champion. Nobody questioned his heart. He may have been small in stature compared to who he was playing with, but he just had this 
killer instinct about him, right? Uh, a smooth game and a killer crossovers. Uh, many of you remember his rookie season when he shook the great one, Michael Jordan, out of his shoes and hit and hit a jump shot, had a smooth jump shot. Uh, he was known to be tough as nails and often played through a multitude of injuries, did not make excuses, win, loss, or draw. Uh, and not only that, but I remember in, in 2001 when he led his, his Philadelphia 76ers back basketball team to the finals, right? And uh, unfortunately, he could not overcome my Lakers and my Kobe Bryant. Come on, say amen. But, but nonetheless, nonetheless, he led them there. And then, and then to put the cherry on top was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. Now, here's what the interesting thing. Whenever you hear most people, not everybody, but most people uh, talk about Allen Iverson or refer to Allen Iverson, they generally will talk about one or a combination of the things that you just heard me mention out of my mouth. Now, very rarely uh, does anyone know about or does anyone talk about uh, a problem that existed in Allen Iverson's life when he was just a young teenager uh, that threatened to separate him from answering the call to greatness that was all over his life. Now, now, unknown to some people, not all people, but some of you who are sports connoisseurs or just history buffs, then you already know about this. Uh, but after his junior year in high school, when he won that state championship in football and in basketball, he just so happened to go out bowling with some of his friends. And they're having a good old time, just hanging out, right? I love bowling myself. And, and they get into an altercation with, with another group of boys who were there. And one thing turns into another. Shopping match in, ensues. Uh, they shot shouted some words, the boys shouted some words back at them. And before you knew it, they were in an all out brawl inside that bowling alley. I mean, fighting and fists are going here, fists are going there. And, and then the police get called, right? And here's what ended up happening. When the police officer showed up, um, uh, only Iverson and his friends were arrested. And in the process of what happened, Allen Iverson was accused of hitting an innocent bystander, a woman in the head with a chair. Now, now here's where the problem comes, family. You just stay with me, we're going somewhere. Uh, here's where the problem comes. Because as a result of this brawl that Allen Iverson was participating in and this accusation of him hitting this woman in the head with a chair, here is what ended up happening to this person with so much potential, so much star power, uh, and people just knew he was going to be great. He ended up being charged as an adult at 17 years of age, and he drew a 15-year prison sentence. Now, now, for many of us, we, we had no idea uh, that that was what Allen Iverson's life was like uh, before he became the Allen Iverson that we know him to be today. But in that moment, here's what I want you to see. In that moment, his calling to greatness, uh, what he would go, all that he would go on to do, all-star appearances, all-pro, all-world, Hall of Fame, like all of that was threatened to be done away with because he got hit with a fifth. 15 year prison sentence. Okay, let's push pause right there and we'll be back in just a moment. The Bible introduces to us in, in Luke chapter 19, you know the story, uh, introduces us to another man who is sort of short in stature and the Bible calls his name Zacchaeus. Y'all y'all know that. Uh, if you don't know nothing else about Zacchaeus, you can certainly sing this tune. Oh, Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man. Y'all know that song, act like you don't know it, right? Uh, the word of God introduces us to, to, this, uh, to this man who was also short in stature. His name was, was Zacchaeus. And in my opinion, this is just Pastor Drew, in my opinion, I believe that Zacchaeus was destined for greatness. He was destined for stardom. And I believe the Bible shows us as much when we get into his story. Now, the word of God, here's what we know about him. The word of God says that, that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. Uh, now that sounds pretty. Let me just give you it in street terms. That dude was a notorious cheater. All right. Uh, he would he would uh, take the sales tax and property tax and income tax and emergency tax from the people of God, the Jewish people. And his job was to give their tax money to the Roman Empire. Now, because Zacchaeus was a smart businessman, I, I didn't say this was spiritual. 
I said he was a smart businessman. Uh, Zacchaeus said, let, let, me, let me capitalize on this and, and make some money for myself. So here's what Brother Zacchaeus did, y'all. Zacchaeus started overcharging the Jewish people. Uh, if you owe 10 uh, denarii, he charged you 15, right? Uh, and here's what he would do. He would pocket uh, whatever he overcharged them for, he would pocket it himself and then give to the Roman Empire whatever they demanded. And if you can imagine years of doing this equaled one thing for this brother, he became filthy rich. Now watch this. Uh, if you can look past that for a moment, I know we don't like people mess with our money, but if you can look past that for just a moment, here's what I'm suggesting that Zacchaeus had a God-given calling on his life that he knew nothing about. And let me just go ahead and, and, and give it to you right here, that it had nothing to do with the job that he had or the money that he earned for himself. But the word of God shows us that much like Allen Iverson, Zacchaeus had a problem. Now, you asking me like a good Bible student, well, pastor, what was his problem? I mean, was it that he was a cheater? Uh, was it that he was rich already? No, no that, that wasn't the problem. Might have been a problem, but it wasn't the problem. The, the problem I'm suggesting that Zacchaeus had was really something that he could not do anything about. That brother was short. The, 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 word, the word of God says, listen, uh, God has a call on his life. And, and then there was something that threatened to come in between him answering the call that Jesus had on his life. And, and it wasn't money. It, it wasn't status. He, it wasn't his intelligence. That brother was just height challenge, right? And I just want to put a pause right here and just say to my sisters, uh, y'all, don't, don't be hating on the short brothers, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to leave that right there. Uh, so, so, so the word says, the word says that here's why that was a problem because Jesus just so happened to be coming to Jericho that day. Now, now make no mistake about it. We, I mean, we believe in God. We, we know that, that nothing happens by happenstance. There's no coincidence. There's nothing random. Uh, make no mistake about it that Jesus was going to Jericho to talk to and see Zacchaeus. Okay, it, it wasn't like Jesus was just strolling and he's like, oh, uh, who's this random short dude, right? Uh, Jesus was going to Jericho because he had a plan and a mission on calling Zacchaeus into greatness. Now, here's what happened. A word began to spread that, hey, y'all, listen, Jesus is coming. Um, spread the word. Tell your neighbors. Tell your family. You don't want to miss this. We don't know when he's going to be back in Jericho. Uh, we might not be able to travel and see him when he's in the city next to us. So y'all want to be here because he's coming. So word begins to spread and people begin to share with everybody they come in contact with. So much so that by the time Jesus got there, the streets were so covered and crowded with people that Zacchaeus, as this short height challenged person could not see Jesus at all. He looked in front of him and could not see Jesus. He looked beside him and he couldn't see Jesus. He looked behind him and he could not see Jesus. All he could see around him was people that were taller than him that could see Jesus, but he could not see Jesus himself. So here's what Zacchaeus was faced with. How am I going to be able to see Jesus or how is Jesus going to be able to see Zacchaeus if he could not see him? And if he could not see him, how would he call him? And if he couldn't call him, how would Zacchaeus answer the call? So here's what the word of God says. Word of God says Zacchaeus didn't give up. He, he sort of turned his, his, his gaze upward. And, and as he turned his gaze upward, here is what Zacchaeus noticed. There's a sycamore tree right beside me. So the word of God said that he goes and he runs up this sycamore tree. And as he runs up this sycamore tree and he begins to see past the crowd, Jesus sees him. Jesus looks at him. Jesus calls him. And then Zacchaeus answers the call. Uh, so, so, so here it is. It's crazy, y'all. Uh, Jesus' call on Zacchaeus' life. Here, here's why the call of God is so important. Uh, Jesus' call on Zacchaeus' life instantly propelled Zacchaeus into stardom. Now, now watch this. Zacchaeus' greatness had nothing to do with the money he had. And y'all, he was filthy rich, but it had nothing to do with the money he had. Nothing to do with the fact that he was a chief tax collector. No, no, no. The moment that Jesus saw him and called him, his name became etched in history forever. 
so that now we write songs about him and we sing those songs even in 2020. Now we preach uh, sermons about him and books have been written about him. Commentaries uh, uh, write and analyze about his stories. And here is why I get so excited about this story of Zacchaeus. It's because Zacchaeus' story is one of the greatest evidences that even the most notorious sinners can be saved. Woo! Listen, y'all, I'm, I'm getting excited. And I know I, I Pastor Regina got to come up next. So I'm going to move, y'all. But listen, I, I get excited because sometimes I, I feel like we lose sight of where the Lord has brought us from. And I know that we got people that's flooding this timeline right now who used to be an X something. I don't, need, I don't need you to put it in the comment section. Just think it to yourself, how you used to be uh, the kind of guy that you were and used to be the kind of girl that you were. You, you used to be all these different things where people would look at you and say, my God. God, there's no way they know the Lord. There's no hope for them. And, and, and there's no way they can turn their life around. Uh, there's no way they can make anything of themselves. And the same things that people used to say about you, they said about Zacchaeus. But here's why I'm so grateful. It's, it's because while Zacchaeus was a cheater, while Zacchaeus was a criminal, while Zacchaeus had a heart and heart, Jesus called him. Okay, okay, we got to move. We got to move. So watch this, y'all. Uh, uh, um, uh, Brandon, you can go ahead and switch to the next slide. Here, here we go right here. Uh, although, and, and you should hear me on this, although everybody has a God-given call on their life, not everybody is called to do something great that will be remembered forever. Now, that's a tough pill to swallow, but I need you to catch where I'm going. Here's what I'm suggesting, that not everyone is called to be front and center and have their name etched in history. Now, not everybody is called to be of that magnitude. Now, when you think about people in the Bible and stories in the Bible, uh, quite naturally, there are people who tend to get more recognition than others. So, so it does not matter how long ago it was, everybody knows about Moses parting the Red Sea. Everybody knows about Joseph going from the pit to the prison to the palace. Everybody knows about this young kid named David that takes down this giant named Goliath. Everybody knows about Noah, how he built this boat and he defeated a flood that God sent to the shore. Like everybody knows about those stories. But, but watch this, watch this. Sometimes God's call on your life is not so much for you to do something great, but for you to do something that will pave the way for someone else to answer God's call to greatness. And the question is, can you be faithful? And can I be faithful? Can we be humble? Can we be grateful for God's call on our lives, even if it means I won't be remembered for it? Okay, let, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Uh, 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 typically, typically, uh, Allen Iverson is the one who is given the most recognition for his greatness. He's typically the one who's honored the most. He's typically the one who's given the accolades the most, and rightfully so. Some people might say, uh, I, I'm going to give some, some thanks to, to Mother Iverson as well, because she did a great job raising him. Some people might give praise to George Thompson, his college basketball coach, for taking a chance on him when nobody else wanted to touch an ex-con. Uh, some people may give praise to Larry Brown, who was his uh, who was his NBA coach when he went to the finals, right? Uh, but, but most people would say, I, I give Allen Iverson most of the credit uh, because of how great he became. Now, now, little do most of us know that when Iverson was 17 years old and he started to uh, he started to do the time for the crime that he was sentenced for, that there just so happened to be a man named Douglas Wilder. When Iverson was only four months into his 15-year prison sentence, for whatever reason, Douglas Wilder, who was the governor of Virginia at that time, showed clemency on Allen Iverson. Let me just put it in, in layman's terms. He showed mercy on that brother. Uh, for some reason, he just saw something about him where he said, listen, I'm not going to leave him to rot in jail for 15 years. I, I see something more than him than just being an ex-con. And so for whatever reason, uh, Virginia Governor Douglas Wilder uh, showed mercy to Allen Iverson and overturned the conviction, released him from prison, and then George Thompson recruited him to Georgetown, and then he got uh, drafted to the NBA, and now he's in the Hall of Fame. Now, now, now watch this, y'all, because I watched Allen Iverson's Hall of Fame speech. He thanked Mama. He thanked George Thompson. He thanked Larry Brown. He thanked teammates. He thanked Almighty God. Not once in the 45 minutes of that speech did he thank the governor 
Douglas Wilder, who released him from prison so that he could go on to be the Iverson we know him to be today. Not once, y'all. And here's what I'm suggesting, that nobody remembers Douglas Wilder. There was nobody trying to put Douglas Wilder's face on a milk carton or a Wheaties box. It wasn't nobody giving Douglas Wilder a shoe endorsement deal. No, all that stuff went to Allen Iverson, but there would be no Allen Iverson without Douglas Wilder letting him out. So, so here we go. And, and, and I'm done. In, in much the same way, typically when we read the story of Zacchaeus, most people walk away uh, talking about Zacchaeus, uh, a great redemption story. He was turned from sinner to saint and all these great accolades. Uh, he paid back what he stole from the people fourfold. However, I get excited, y'all. There's an unknown hero of this story that never seems to really get any recognition for Zacchaeus' greatness. And that's the sycamore tree planter, y'all. <laughs> the sycamore tree planter, y'all. Uh, Zacchaeus, here, here was the problem. Zacchaeus could not see Jesus. And, and, and if he could not see Jesus, then he, could, he couldn't get called by Jesus. And the only reason that he was able to answer Jesus's call on his life was because at some point in the past, there was a brother or a sister, I don't know, that had the job to plant some sycamore trees. And they received the responsibility to plant that tree right there. Now, now what if the sycamore tree planter said, who cares if I plant this tree? Tree anyways. Is it really going to matter to anybody? I mean, who in the world recognizes people that plant trees? But I just want to let you know that if he or she was not obedient to God's call or the call that was on their life to just plant a tree, then Zacchaeus would have had nothing to climb up in to see Jesus that day. And I'm just so grateful for individuals who can be humble enough and grateful enough just to do their job, even if it means that they won't be recognized for it. So here it is. You see it on, on screen already. The sycamore tree planter's faithfulness to his call provided Zacchaeus the opportunity to be faithful to his call. And here is what I want somebody to understand. All right, well, you may hate where you are. You may not always like doing what you're doing, but somebody needs you. Here it is. Everybody's not going to be called to be a Moses, a Joseph, a David, or a Zacchaeus. Some of us will be called to be sycamore tree planters. And the question is, can I be faithful enough to be okay with that? If nobody recognizes what I did, can it be good enough to me to know that I did a good job planting that tree? I may not put my name on it. I may not get a, get a plaque for it. I may not have a Bible verse written about me, but y'all, I planted the mess out that tree and couldn't nobody plant a sycamore tree better than me. So here it is, here it is. We, done. we can go all day. All right, God's call on your life is three things right here and we done. God's call on your life is unique. It is tailor-made just for you. It ain't no goodwill or salvation army hand-me-down calling. It is God's calling on your life before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Never let anybody convince you otherwise. His calling on your life is unique. Not only that, but his calling on your life is important. Here it is. There is somebody depending on you answering your call so that they can answer God's call on their lives. So your calling is important. And I shudder to think, how many people's calling, life calling, godly calling has been prolonged and postponed, not because they didn't want to answer, but because I refuse to answer mine. Yo, this, this is a domino effect. If I, if I can answer mine, then my peace will be knocked down into somebody else's peace. And then Gina can be faithful to her call. And then her peace knocks down into Renee's peace. And he can be faithful to his. And his peace knocks down into Willie's peace. And he can be faithful with his. Your calling in life is important because somebody's depending on it for them to get their call. And then last thing, I'm done. God's calling on your life is intentional. It's not by accident. He took into account your failures, the good about you, your gifts, your abilities, your weaknesses, and he tailor fitted an intentional purpose field calling just for you. Whether God's call or of duty on your life propels you to greatness, or paves the way for somebody else to be called to greatness. My question is, and I'm done, will we be faithful enough to answer it? Lord, I thank you so much today for the sycamore tree planter. In Jesus' name, amen. If you... <laughs>
Man, first of all, y'all, he just preached. <laughs> Lord have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Preach, bro. <laughs> Desire to follow Jesus. I have desire to follow Jesus. I have desire to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. Quite, quite, <laughs> whew, 
that was a good word uh, by both from both of my brothers. Um, I'll tell you right now, if the Lord had not specifically told me uh, to share this word, if he hadn't specifically told me to come and plant this tree, Nate, I would, I would be on my way to moving into the end and I would say the benediction and close out because I mean, we're done. But um, I do believe that God gave me this tree right here to plant for somebody. Amen. That was such a strong word. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you so much. All right. If y'all still with me, uh, let me know y'all still out there. Let me know you're still awake, even though there's no way you could have fell asleep <laughs> with the words that have come before this. Uh, but if you're still, if you're still there, go on ahead and just put, I hate it here. Uh, one more time for me. Um, I hate it here, but somebody needs me. I wonder, does anybody actually believe that? I wonder, do we actually believe that somebody needs you uh, this afternoon or do we just feel like we hate it here and do we feel like uh, <clears throat> we hate it here and that's all there is to it uh, what if I got a question for you what if I told you <clears throat> that this was one of the moments that you have been preparing for your whole life like what if I told you that this moment that you're in right now as we're in this quarantine and, and you're going through all of these different things, what if I told you that uh, this was the moment, one of the moments that you've been preparing for your whole life? Father God, I ask that you would uh, just allow somebody to receive exactly what you want them to receive um, through these words. In your precious name we pray, amen. Uh, I'm reading from Acts chapter 16. I want to just tell the story, but the Bible just breaks stuff down so good that I've been wanting to read the scripture. All right, so I, 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 I'm going to read it with me, all right? And you guys going to listen, all right? Because uh, uh, you're going to listen. I mean, you can read with me if you want to. I'm at Acts chapter 16, if you want to pull out your Bibles. Or if you're on your phone, though, you know, it might be hard to do both. So, <clears throat> oh, praise the Lord. I see Bibles. Amen. Amen. All right, so they've got Bibles here with us. Um, so if you have a Bible there, you can turn with me to Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read in your hearing. Um, all right, so Acts chapter 16, I'm at verse 16. Um, it says, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer. Now, this is talking about Paul and Silas, all right? Paul and Silas had just landed in Philippi, and, and they're going into a new city, right? And so they're going down um, to a place of prayer, and they met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her, master, for, for her masters by telling fortunes. So she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men and servants of the Most High God, um, the, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul, uh, eventually he got exasperated. I'm, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says that he got exasperated and that he turned and he said to the demon within her, I command you on the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and instantly it left her. Okay, how to leave her? It left her instantly. And her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and they dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. And the whole city is in uproar uh, because these Jews, uh, they shouted, because of these Jews, they shouted to the officials, right? And they're doing this because they're messing with their money. Nate just talked about it. People don't like when people mess with their money. You mess with, my, you mess with my money, you know, I start to get a little funny. You know what I mean? You can't be messing with the money, right? So then, okay, they're teaching customs. They said they're, they're teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice, all right? A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. Where were they thrown? Hold on, but I didn't hear y'all. Y'all got to talk back to me. Where were they thrown? Right, they're thrown into prison. All right, so the jailer was ordered to make sure they did not escape. Somebody say, you got one job. Homeboy had one job. You got one job. He said, you got one job. Make sure they don't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and he clamped their feet into the stocks, made sure he was, they were good. And around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and they're singing hymns to God and the other pr prisoners were listening. What are they doing? They're listening. The other prisoners are listening. All right. <clears throat> First of all, Right there, I just got to pause because I, I noticed that right there, before we can get any further, they turned that jail into their sanctuary. They turned the jail into the sanctuary. They're in the jail, right? 
they 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 are in 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 uh in handcuffs and, and they're in the shanks and they're they're sitting down and and they're I mean they are locked up they're in prison all right I mean they're not they're not in the church with the pews and the nice place they don't have poinsettias um there in the front uh, uh they don't have the the whole the whole works they are in a prison cell they're in a dungeon the Bible says and they turn the jail into the sanctuary I think the first thing we can real, real, um, realize is that wherever you are that is where God wants to be. Wherever you are is where God wants to be. I think so oftentimes we want to uh, be make sure we are in a certain space or we uh, create these certain spaces um, and we feel like that's where God will dwell. We feel like that's where God will come and we feel like um, things have to be, you know, just so perfect. And God's like, listen, I'm trying to get in your space. I want you to be in my space or wherever we at. Even if we in the jail, let's go, let's go. So the first thing we got to realize is that even in the jail, they turn that into their sanctuary. So even as we're home right now, let me tell you right now, your living room, okay, y'all, those of you who have your TV up, you got TV. Up. Listen, that's your throne room, okay? That's your throne. You that is your sanctuary right there. You know, somebody might be in the bathroom. Listen, I'm not getting in your business. Wherever you at, wherever you watching from, that's your sanctuary. And you ought to be able to realize that God is not concerned about that. God's just like, get into my presence. Get into my presence. Oh, they turn the jail into the sanctuary. Uh, uh, the thing about it is, uh, it, the next thing it says that uh, uh, it said that. They turned the jail into the sanctuary, and, and the fact that the people, as they're singing, they said that people were listening to them. People were listening to them. All right, so, I mean, just think about it, all right? There's, I mean, you're in jail. I mean, God, come on, you're in jail. Willie, you in jail. You done did something. I don't know what you done did, Willie. I don't know who you, <laughs> I don't know what you done did, but you in jail, my guy, all right? And so now you in jail, all right, you are, you are a, a criminal, all right? You, don't, you shot somebody, shame on you. You shot somebody and you are in, you are in the handcuffs, all right? And, and, and Renee, Renee, oh man, Renee, Renee, oh, Renee, he let a revolt. <laughs> he let a revolt <laughs> and he got caught. Those who know Renee know I'm right, around, right up his, I'm speaking, his, I'm speaking his, up his alley, right? He read about, and Nate, Nate was hanging out with Zacchaeus and Nate was stealing money. He was stealing the money. And so he's in jail too. So you got, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting next to a, a, a murderer, uh, somebody who's trying to leave revolt and, and, and not listening to the government. And then you have somebody who's stealing, laundering the funds, right? And you guys are in there. And then I come in, someone who loves the Lord. And you're wondering and you're looking at me and you're saying, well, who, who is this? Who is this person? Why, why is she singing? Why is she singing? It said that the people that were in the jail, <laughs> they are laughing right now, guys. <laughs> it says that the people that are in the jail are sitting there and they're listening because they're wondering, man, who is this person? Because I'm in here, I mean, y'all are cussing, y'all mad, y'all, y'all in your feelings, y'all, y'all all, all over the place. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all not singing to Jesus, okay? Y'all are in your feelings, you're upset, you're cussing, you're mad, you're being rude to everybody, and you're angry. You're angry because of where you are. And then I come in, Paul and Silas come in, they in there, and they're just like, the Lord is blessing me right now. Okay, right? And, they, and, everybody, <laughs> and everybody's like, wait a minute, hold on. What's this about? Who are these people? You've got to realize that somebody is always watching how you deal with the hand that you are dealt. Somebody is always watching how you deal with the hand that you are dealt. Uh, they are looking at them and they're like, man, they look like they were dealt the same hand I was because we in the same situation, but something's different about these guys because they're good. Like they're singing, even though I'm over here in my feelings, but they're singing. And so and then it goes on to say that suddenly as these people are singing and, and, and they're singing praises to God and the other people are they're angry, they're listening, uh, their spirits begin to calm. They're wondering, okay, well, what's, what's going on? What's coming over me? And then the Bible says in verse 26, it says, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The chains fell off. Like the chains just fall. All right. My singing is so powerful that the chains are like, boom. <laughs> That's what happens when you're connected to Jesus. <laughs> okay. And uh, the thing is, then it says that the jailer woke up to see. Um, no, hold on. Wait. 
First of all, let's just wait, let me back up just a little bit. I gotta make sure we make that point right there. Somebody ought to be singing in a situation. I mean, I just kinda, I didn't have this in the notes, but I just, as I'm talking, I'm like, nah, you can't, you can't move past that too fast. I'm trying to hurry up because I don't got too much time. But I can't move past that. Like, I'm just saying, some stuff is gonna break in your pain. Like, some stuff is gonna break in your praise. Like, your praise and, and your worship when you're in these situations where things, where you hate it here, if you begin to shift your attitude, you gotta shift your attitude. Uh, you gotta shift your mindset. And you gotta shift it and begin to begin to, to speak over your life, speak over your situation, and watch what what chains will fall off. Your chains will begin to fall, and as your chains are falling, the people that are around you are gonna witness that, right? And you can't let that. Don't let that supply. All right. So in verse twenty-seven, it says that the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He automatically, I mean, come on, because the jailer is like the jailer had how many jobs? One job. Poor boy had one job. Okay, so he assumed the prisoners had escaped because I mean I'm telling you right now, Willie, Renee, and Nate, if the if the if the doors had opened, y'all would have y'all would have escaped. Y'all would have been gone. Y'all wouldn't have been sitting there. <laughs> they said no. They said no, they wouldn't have. Okay, they would have left. So he said, assume the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. We are all here. And see, the thing about it is, originally, y'all thought y'all would have ran, uh, Willie Nate and Renee, y'all thought y'all would have ran. But do you realize that uh, if you were smart, you wouldn't run from the power and the presence of God, right? The people were standing there. The people didn't move because they were they realized the power and the presence of God. They couldn't go anywhere. The power of God was so, like, it was so so uh, full in the prison, it, you could feel it. It was so deep in the prison. It was it, it was so warm in that prison. It wasn't cold. They were in a dungeon, but it, it began to warm up. They're wondering what's going on. I mean, first these people are singing, and now I'm feeling something. I'm feeling some type of way. Now I feel an earthquake, and now I'm just like, yo, I'm trying to get to know who you talk about. I'm not going nowhere. I know these chains just fell, but if your God can make chains fall, I'm not moving. I'm going to sit my behind right here in this jail, even though I could run, but I'm too smart to run from the power and the presence of God. Oh man, some of us could learn something from these uh, people in jail because many of us are running from God. We're running from the power and the presence of God. And God is just like, oh, come close to me, come close to me. And we're experiencing this. As Christians, we've experienced this before. And you would think once we experience the presence of God, it'll be a place we run to. But why are we running from it? Why are we running from the power and the presence of God? Man, we ought to be running to it. No matter what's going on, no matter uh, um, whether it's COVID-19, whether it's Corona, whether there's no Corona, whether everything's fine, no matter whatever is going on, we ought to be running toward the power and the presence of God, man. <laughs> the power and the presence of God got on those people. And you know what? <laughs> Nate, Nate said, I'm not running. Willie thought about it. He thought about it and the, 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 the power of God fell on him, fell on him so good that Willie began to sing in the jail too. <laughs> don't you know that when the power, <laughs> when the power of God gets a hold of you, oh man, you don't know what he will do. He'll do with you and he'll do with your gifts. Um, so then the jailer, the jailer comes in verse 29, the jailer called for lights and he ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. So now I mean, everybody's like, okay. What's going on? Like, who is this guy y'all talking about? Because this is good. Like, I'm trying to get in on what y'all got. So the jailer had one job. And now he's just like, take that one job, throw it out the window. Who is your God? Sir, my, what must I do to be saved? To get my one job. Because I believe that the person that, that's saving you right now is more important than this one job that I had. So my one job can go. So then in, in verse 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Oh, somebody needs to get this. He's asking what I got to be saved, man. Ah, Paul and Silas didn't stop and pull out everything. They didn't stop and pull out no Bible studies. I'm sorry. I'm not even trying to come for nobody right now, but this is like, oh, I mean, come on. Like, he's like, what do I got to be saved? He's like, yo, believe in Jesus. That's all. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved along with everybody in your household. He's just like, yo, you just need to believe. But you believe. It's just as hard. Oh, just as hard as you were going for that one job you have. Switch that one job and make God your one job. Oh, make God your one job and, and, and go hard for God. Just go hard for God. Forget the other job and make... make <laughs> Go hard for God and, and, and just get in, get into that space with God and watch what he will do and he will save you. That's all you've got to do. Let me tell you somebody, because of their faith, 
because of Paul and Silas' faith, because of their faith and their attitude, the jail on that night witnessed a move of God instead of a meeting, cussing, mad, in their feelings, Willie, Nate, and Renee, because they had all been dealt a bad hand. They had all been dealt a bad hand, and, and they were mad. But instead of instead of uh, going into the prison and and, and, and ooh, instead of going into the prison and appearing like everyone else, instead of going into the prison and being like all the other prisoners, they stood out. Uh, they stood out. There was something different about them when they walked into the prison, and there ought to be something different about you when you walk into your situation. There ought to be something different about you when you walk into your job. There ought to be something different about you when you walk into your church. Keyword church, because I, th there ought to be something different about you when you walk into your church. Stop worrying about what everybody else in the church is doing. What's different about you when you walk into the church? Because of their faith and their attitude. Some of us need to shift our attitude. Some of us need to shift our attitudes. And our attitudes are off. And because your attitude is off, man, you're not going nowhere. And you're not trying to get in God's presence. Mm. And because we're not trying to get in our God's presence, our attitude is off. <clears throat> it goes both ways. Your attitude won't be off if you're in God's presence. So we've got to shift our attitude so we can get in God's presence. All right, somebody say, guess what? <clears throat> guess what? Guess what? If y'all still with me in the chat, y'all still with me in the chat, somebody type, type, guess what? Guess what? I got, I got, I got some good news. I got some good news for y'all. I need y'all to give me a, a few more seconds. I need you to lean in because I got the good stuff. I, I need you to guess, guess what? Because as we're looking and we're saying like, I hate it here, but somebody needs me. So we see that the jailer now has gotten saved. Uh, I mean, uh, Willie, Renee, and, and, and Nate have gotten saved as well, as you see their pastors today. So they have gotten saved. They turned over their leaf. They, uh, Willie, Willie has, Willie has, he has put the gun down. Uh, amen. Uh, 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 Renee, Renee ha has, has, has began to relieve, lead people for Jesus. He is, he is leading a movement for the Lord. And Nate has returned all the money. He returned, he, he returned the new Lamborghini. He returned the new Lamborghini that he purchased. And, and he has, he has given the money back. He has given the money to the church, praise the Lord. Uh, and because of what they did, people's lives was changed. People's circumstances was changed, right? People changed, but guess what? Ah, whoo. <laughs> Y'all ready? All right, all right. Everybody say, guess what, guess what? The jail experience wasn't the I hated here moment. The jail experience wasn't the I hated here moment. You would think that when you get into the jail, and you're down in the dungeon and you're you're, you're in the, the in the in the handcuffs and, and you're stuck and you, you, it's nasty and it's, it's dirty i mean i would i would i would if i was really them if it was me i would have hated it okay let's be very clear i would have been crying i would have been a hot mess i wouldn't have been singing it would have been singing tears <laughs> i would have been singing tears where's my mama at like no anyway so that would have been my i hated it here but for them this wasn't the i hate it here moment all right can you believe that they appreciated the jail experience Paul and Silas appreciated the jail experience. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Uh, 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 in um, Acts of the Apostles, it says that instead, instead, in the utter darkness and desolation of the dungeon, they encouraged each other by words of prayer and sang praises to God because they found worthy to suffer shame for his sake. Their hearts were cheered by a deep and earnest love for the cause of their redeemer. Paul thought of persecution, of the persecution he had been instrumental in bringing upon the disciples of Christ. And he rejoiced that his eyes had been opened to see and his heart to feel the power of the glorious truths once he was despised. Let me break that down. Listen, they're so happy that they have a, a moment uh, to get around people who are looking for Jesus. They see it as a witnessing opportunity. Paul is looking at these people. And he's just like, man, I remember when I was like you and I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit and be like you, like I was. I'm no longer like you because I'm different now. So now I've got a different attitude. So yeah, I'm in jail and yeah, I'm probably supposed to hate it here in this moment, but I don't hate it. I appreciate it because I, I can appreciate the jail experience because it allows me to offer someone else a Jesus experience. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all not real. Y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. They're like, I appreciated the jail experience because it allowed, uh, it allowed them to offer someone else a Jesus experience. And they're like, man, yeah, I'm in jail, but here go Jesus, here go Jesus, here go Jesus. And they're just passing it out, passing, passing Jesus out. <laughs> like, no, get to know him, get to know him, get to know him. And it's just like, man, 
But when we look at the story and we often so many times we're just like, oh man, they're in jail. You would think that they, you know, they had their I hate it moment and then they shifted into singing. Man, I just think they came in ready. They came in ready. So the jail experience uh, wasn't the real I hate it. So there are, the real I hate it here moment, what is it? We missed it. We missed it. You, you missed it. Those of you who were reading your Bibles, you had your Bible out. I told you I was starting in verse 16 and you missed it because the I hate it here moment was in verse 16. So we're going to go back. We're going to read it again. This time I'm going to put it on the screen so that I can make sure that you're reading it because I know you probably didn't have your Bible out in the first place. So you probably weren't really reading with me, but now you can actually see it so you won't miss it. All right, cool. Here we go. So it says one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, where were they going? Yeah, place of prayer. Exactly. So they're on a mission. They go in, they go into prayer. They're going to pray. They're going to meet Jesus. Oh, and when somebody, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So one day we were going down to the place of prayer. We met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future, right? She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. So she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God. And uh, they come to tell you how to be saved, right? Um, this went on day after day until Paul got exasperated. Uh -huh. And then he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you the name of the Lord, come out, right? All right, so exasperated. That's what it says in the New Living Translation. It says exasperated. Mm -hmm. And then in the English Standard Version, the NIV, the, N the New King James Version, it's all like he got annoyed. Like homeboy, he's like, he's annoyed, right? And then in the Berean study Bible, it's like he got aggravated. I mean, I can just feel it. It's just, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it rising up, right? And then in the, uh, the literal Bible of the Berean, it says he got his distress. Like, so he's in distress, he's aggravated, he's annoyed, he's exasperated. And then it says in King James Version that he was grieved. And then the contempor contemporary English Version says that he was upset. And then in the message, you, you gotta love the message, it said he was fed up. The message said he was fed up. Listen, to, it's getting closer and closer to how we talk. It's like, I'm fed up with you, honey. So then I, in the 2020 right now version, all right, the 2020 right now version that I wrote, all right, the 2020 right now version, it says, I hate it here. That was the I hate it here moment. He was exasperated. He was annoyed. He was aggravated. He was distressed. He was grieved. He was upset. He was fed up. And he's like, I hate it here. I hate it in this very moment. And why did he hate it in this very moment? I mean, he's headed to go pray and this girl is, is, is behind him. But it sounds like it said, Nate, it, it, Renee, it said in the text that, that she's like, oh, she, she, she's saying that this is God. So she's saying the day that they came, right? And so it's kind of like, well, why he mad? Like, why he, why he in his feelings? Why he's like, I hate it here. But that was his I hate it here moment. I'm going to read three things for you, but I had to get something for everybody. I got something for the smart people. Because I mean, some of y'all like the smart people. So I got something from the commentary. And then I got something from, from Sister White. Because I got, I got something a little bit for everybody. I got something from the commentary I want to read. I got something from, from E.G. White I want to read. And I got something from me that's going to make sense. All right. So look, <clears throat> here we go. It says, these acclamations may have been true enough. Now, this is, hold on, let me back this up. because This is what, this is in, re in re reference to the fact that um, the, the girl who is following them seems like she's saying stuff that's true. She's saying like, you know, these, that, they're, that they're, 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 they're sent from God and they're, they're working from God, right? All right, so it says, these acclamations may have been true enough, but they were open to too much misunderstanding for pagan hearers. The truth could not be so easily condensed for those from a polytheistic background. Jesus might be seen as just another savior in the bulging pantheon of Greek gods. All right, that's, 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 that's from the commentary right there. All right, here we go. Acts of the Apostles. The words of recommendation uttered by this woman were an injury to the cause of truth, distracting the minds of the people from the teachings of the apostles and bringing the disrepute upon the gospel. And by then many were led to believe that the men who spoke with the spirit and power of God were actuated by the same spirit as this emis emissary of Satan. That was for all the people that want to be smart. And I just got to make sure I need y'all to know I'll be studying and I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I just don't be preaching like that because that went over a lot of people's heads and y'all y'all not with me and I got to make sure y'all is with me. So essentially what it said is she was trying to mess up God's reputation and, and she was trying to she was trying to equate God to be on the same level as Satan, all right? And Paul is like, yo, you're not about to come in here and mess up who my God is. You're not going to put my God and, and, and Satan on the same level. And because he, he don't like that, that was his I hate it here moment. He was like, I hate it here. Because when somebody is trying to mess up what my God is doing, when somebody's trying to 
tarnish my God's name. When somebody, I'm on my way to prayer and you're bringing me this mess, I'm, trying, I'm, on, I'm on mission. When somebody's trying to get in, in, in the way of the mission that I'm in, I, I, I'm, that's my I hate it here moment. And so Paul is just like, ah, boom, I hate it here. I hate it here. Uh, uh, there I hate it here moment was the moment somebody tried to come for God. Essentially, it wasn't the jail. There I hate it here moment was the moment somebody tried to come for God. It, it started before they even got into the jail. And they're just like, you coming for who? Not my God, not my God. And then that's when, that's when they rose up. Why did they rise up? Because they realized, listen, uh, uh, that's why he commanded her out because he realized somebody needs me. Somebody needs me. Now, uh, hmm, who needed him, right? Somebody needs me. Huh. First of all, he set the girl free. So the girl needed him. Beyond setting the girl free, he knew that what his mission was in spreading the, the word of the Lord, he knew that that was interrupting. And so honestly, he's thinking about, he's thinking about y'all. He's thinking about us. He's like, listen, I need this message of Jesus to go out to the world. And so she's trying to stop it right now. I hate it here. Somebody needs me. I'm not going to back down and just let her rock with it. No, I'm going to rise up and I'm about to be like, come out and I'm going to use the power that I know because I know that I can't, my, my mission is too great to allow her to affect what I got going on. Some, uh, I hate it here, but somebody, somebody, uh, 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 somebody, somebody needs me. Uh, you hate it here, but who needs you? That's my question. You hate it here, but who needs you? Like, who is it that needs you? Have you identified that? Have you identified in this moment in your life where you are? Have you identified who needs you? Who is the person that, that, that's making you keep going? The person that you can't give up for? Who, who needs you right now? Um, I, I hate it here, but somebody needs me is, is our, our, um, um, our topic today, right? So my, my first question and my first, honestly, my first appeal is that I want everybody to identify you hate it here, but who needs you? That's the first question you got, all right? I got another question for you. So somebody else is saying, I hate it here, but somebody needs me is, is, the, is our, is our um, phrase. But are you the somebody that needs somebody? Say it again, right? I hate it here, but somebody needs me. Now my question is, are you the somebody that needs somebody? Are you struggling right now? Do you hate it here? But you can't get past the butt. We've been talking about this for a few weeks, but I, I, I'm wondering if there's somebody that's listening, somebody that's watching that's like, yo, I hate it here, but, and I'm trying to get past this, and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get what my butt is, but you can't get past your butt. And so today, some of us need to figure out, listen, who am, who, who's my somebody that I need to go be, be for, be there for, right? And somebody else is like, I need somebody to be there for me. This is the place where you ought to come for that too, right? So in the chat right now, if that's where you are, I need you to go ahead and drop your prayer request right there. If you need somebody to be there for you, drop it in the chat. Um, if you need somebody to be there for you. And also if somebody is there and you need to talk to somebody, you might need to make a decision for Jesus. You might need to say, listen, I just need somebody to pray with me. I need some prayer warriors. We got prayer warriors on deck that are waiting just literally who just want to pray with somebody. If you need somebody to pray with you, if you need somebody to call and encourage you, if you just need somebody, if you want to get into Bible studies, if you feel like you ought to be, need to be baptized, if you're the somebody that's looking for somebody today, we want to invite you just to text this number that's there. You can just text the word decision uh, to, to 216 Two nine eight one four nine five. Uh, you can you can text your the, the word decision there, and we'll have somebody just to contact you. Essentially, we just want to be there for you. We want to somebody right now. Drop it in the chat. Are you looking for somebody? Do you need help? I don't want you to come here and get this good word because we had a good word today. Uh, but I, we don't want you to come here and get this word and then and then leave and then you're still just hurting right so some of us need to figure out who can i help and some of us need to say for the people that need help you need to be able to say help me to be honest i don't even know if this is right but it just came to my mind i don't know if i can say this i don't know if it's i'm gonna say it anyway because it came to my mind and i'm just you know correct me if I'm, i don't know i don't know but i'm just thinking that sometimes we've got to be okay with being able to say i need help Right. And so when I look at the when I look at the story that we just looked at and I looked at huh, I looked at the girl who's like following after them 
and she's 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 mocking them and you know she's she's following Paul and she's following Silas. I can only imagine that even though it's a demon in, inside of her, that at the same time she's following them because she knew that the power that they had and she followed them because she needed help. And so she's like, listen, I need help. And so I think we just need to position ourselves in a space where you may need some help. So some of us need to figure out how we're going to help somebody, how we're going to keep going. Even though we hate it in our situation, um, we're going to still continue to help others. Um, and somebody might just need to just drop in the chat. You need help. Hit us up in our inboxes. You got several passes here. Uh, Temple of Praise, you got, you can hit it up in your inbox um, or Nathaniel's inbox. You can hit Grace Community, mine. You can write it right there in the chat. You can text the number um, as well. We just want to connect with you. And just if there's somebody that's hurting that, that that's like, I need somebody. But at the same time, I want to encourage us everybody to find your somebody father god we just say thank you for the word god we say thank you for your love we say thank you for your grace god thank you so much for um allowing us um to be encouraged today to keep going god i'm asking that you would help us to find our somebody um and to continue on because we know that um we will be able to encourage someone around us based off of how uh, we react to the hand that is dealt towards us in your precious name we pray amen Amen. Listen, y'all. Listen. If if you, you have not seen Jesus today, listen. There is there is nothing else that could have been done. I mean this this was this was just incredible, an incredible experience of of God's power and God's Holy Spirit. Um, and so we're, we're going to be moving towards towards closing. But we do want to just wrap things up because it's been just so much richness um, that came forward today. And so we do want to put a culminating uh, a culmination to to what has happened today. While we're in the process of doing that, I, I do just want to echo what Pastor Regina said, who just preached a strong word, strong, strong word <clears throat> of how we can capitalize on wherever it is that we are to let God's power do what it needs to do. But I do just want to let you know that as, as we are giving our final thoughts on this before we move to prayer, as she said, just mention, put some prayer requests down in, in, in the thread, in the comment section there, if you just have something that you want us to intercede on behalf of, as we mentioned every week, um, even if we don't get to them today, there are, are prayer calls that go on during this week when we have your request recorded, we'll be able to pray for them. So just write those prayer requests down in the comment section. But but I I don't I, I can't let this opportunity pass without just letting these powerful individuals just put somewhat of a of a culminating thought on, on something they heard. So I, I just want to throw out just something simple, um, and, and I want to actually start with with our musician uh, uh, Willie, and then we'll go to to Renee, and then and then Regina, and then myself. And really just simply put, you know, 45 seconds to a minute, you know, or, or something around there. I just want to give, you know, each, each of us the opportunity just to just to share something that stood out to you from from what you've heard today. Uh, just a culminating thought. And then we're going to turn it over to Pastor Johnson for prayer. So so Willie, lead us out, man. I appreciate, first of all, all three of y'all letting um, the Lord use y'all and <laughs> it's a strong word from all three of y'all. It was amazing. Um, I just want to add one thing to uh, what Pastor Nate was preaching on. Um, I thank God for definitely the sycamore tree, the planter. <laughs> it was just, that was crazy. But also one thing for me that comes out in that story was Jesus calling out Zacchaeus' name. Um, as you said, Zacchaeus was uh he was hated in the, in the community. People didn't like him. People was like, he was dirty. They didn't want nothing to do with him, but Jesus calling out his name meant a lot because Zacchaeus name means clean and pure. So by him calling out his name, it negated everything that everybody saw him as. So it does not matter what people see you as does not matter what people think you are. If Jesus calls your name, if your name is Zacchaeus, in this case, we can all be Zacchaeus because he's calling us clean. He's calling you pure. So it doesn't matter what you've been through. doesn't matter what you've done. God sees you as clean and pure. He can always make you clean, make you pure if you just trust and believe. And that's all he said to him was just believe. And this day you are saved because you believe. So 
can say. Um, I'm pretty much just blown um, too. I just got uh, one phrase to, to offer up the sycamore plant of y'all. Uh, when, when he said that thing, man, it just took me to a, a, another level um, because it showed me the value of being unsunk. Um, we don't always need to have um, all of the, uh, I suppose, uh, praise or affirmations that are doing to people, but we can do our part uh, in secret. It, it kind of, you know, just, just in my own uh, life and, and, and ministry, it, it kind of says, you know, th there are some people um, that, that may not ever even join uh, my church necessarily, um, but if I do my part uh, by, by the grace of God, you know, they, they, they may join somebody's church eventually. So I really appreciated that. And I, I also appreciated uh, uh, Pastor Regina coming on and, and, and reminding us uh, that the sanctuary uh, is, is wherever you are uh, with God, uh, that, that any space can be transformed into your, your personal uh, a sanctuary, and that's so valuable, uh, especially right now because we're not in our places of of, of worship. Uh, so, so now uh, she she has kind of invited us to to realize that we may spend time in our cars, and it then becomes the sanctuary, the bedroom, the the living room, wherever we are. So, I I really just appreciate that, and it's been an, an honor and a blessing uh, for me just to be on the line with you all. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I can't get past, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Nate, man, that, that, uh, the planter, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't got, I, that's all I got, man, <laughs> um, I think just the fact that, oh, I think, um, the fear that comes with, um, that comes with your calling, uh, what does it say? It comes with it. That comes before it, right? Uh, I think the fear of kind of. I can see that him. I can see him planting the tree. You know, feeling like, all right, I did what you said, but you know, you also think about the fact that you, trees take a while to grow, right? So like, homeboy wasn't around to see Zacchaeus and Jesus. You know what I mean? To to see, to, he wasn't there to see that, right? So it's just like. He planted a seed, but he didn't get to see it come to pass. And it's just like, sometimes I think we do things and feel like we're not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel like you're not doing anything. You feel like, okay, it's what you show me to do, God. But you don't see it. You don't see nothing from it. And I think it's just, that's just so powerful to know that, man, if God told you to do it, <laughs> you want to walk away. This is the part that I, that I call you. You walk away from that, from that seed that you put in. You put your little soil in your water and you walk away with your, he your head held high. I planted my tree. I planted my sycamore tree because it's what God told me to do. Um, and just to be okay in that, you know, if, you know, I, yeah, I just receive it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I can, if I can offer, if I can offer mine, I have, I have two statements rather uh, from both uh, Pastor Cannon and, and Pastor, Pastor Johnson. Um, and Pastor Renee opened us, opened us up and, and he, he mentioned this statement that, that I had to write down and screenshot and save. And, and here was that, that statement. He said uh, that, that God didn't give them power to war. He gave them power to witness. Um, and, and then if that wasn't powerful enough, then he, then he went ahead and shot a dart straight at my heart and said that, that when God gives us the, the power and ability to witness, uh, can we possess the ability to witness even to our enemies? Um, and I just began to think about uh, the individuals who have hurt me the most, uh, who I don't necessarily view in the most positive light. And I'm thinking to myself, if, if God gave me that responsibility, could I be responsible and faithful enough to witness to them? I'm not sure that I can say that I'm fully there yet, um, but I appreciate Pastor Cannon for, for giving me that challenge and that conviction. Uh, then, and then uh, the, the sister of the group, uh, Pastor Regina, Drop that that word on us and and, and she said that that one liner um, don't run from but run towards the presence and the power of of Jesus and I'm sure that we can all resonate with that I think I think every one of us at some point in time had a Jonah spirit 
<laughs> we run it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And as Regina said, no, nah, you know, as much as you can, even if you have an out, like the prison was open, but they said, we, we ain't leaving because the presence of power is here. So even if you have an out, as much as possible, mm. run towards the presence and power of, of the Lord. So I, I am, listen, I am full mm-hmm. in every sense of, of the word. So Pastor Regina, you can you can from here. Yeah, praise God. Um, just for what he did today. Uh, just thank you. It was an opportunity to uh, just to minister with you guys. Um, this afternoon, we have several uh, requests. Um, people are agreeing with all the things that we, uh, you know, kind of just, just mentioned. Um, you guys can drop something that you learned there in the chat as well and uh, begin a conversation amongst yourselves as well. Um, but I see several requests. Um, of course, we we're going to be praying, praying over all of the crust. We're praying for people's families, a lot of requests for people's families, praying for sickness, illness. Um, man, there's just so many things to pray for. Um, and I just want to encourage you all to spend time in prayer and to spend time in his presence. Um, I think a lot of times we can drop requests and walk away from them, but I want to encourage you to begin to pray on your situations and pray on the things that are um, on your heart. And in the chat, if you guys could begin to pray for one another, if you see somebody else's prayer request, I'm encouraged you to pray for that person. Um, also, they put the prayer line there. If you guys want to hop on for prayer, um, you can do that as well. But right now, I just want to spend just a few moments just praying um, praying over the request. Father God, I just say thank you for what you've done here today. God, I'm praying that somebody was set free. I'm praying that somebody made a decision for you. I'm praying that somebody is reminded that they are needed. Um, I'm just hoping that someone is reminded that they ought to listen to you um, and even the little things, God, and you'll take those little things and you'll grow them and you'll flourish them just like you did that tree. God, our little things that we feel are nothing or we feel are measly. God, you can take them and you can um, just transform. And so God, we say thank you for that. Um, Lord, we're asking that you would be with every single person that's in the chat right now. God, there are people that are crying out to you. God, there are people that are in need. God, there are people that are hurting. God, there are people that are uh, family members are hurting. God, people are in the hospital. God, people are dying. God, people are sad. God, people are grieving. God, people are hurting. Uh, just, uh, there's just so much going on. The list goes on and on. There are people that are in uh, abusive situations, people that are stuck in homes that, uh, that, that they would need to get out of. God, there are just so many different things. There are frontline workers who are still out and about risking their lives for others. God, there are so many different things that we could just bring up right now. And God, we're just giving them all to you because we know that you're uh, you're the God that can handle them. You're God that can take all of our situations and you can juggle them in your hands and make them make sense. God, you can connect the dots where we don't see dots. God, you can... Um, from you know the beginning to the end so God you saw this moment before it came God you were prepared God it's catching us off guard it's catching us unprepared but God we're believing that you're prepared for this moment and so God right now we need you to intervene God right now we are shifting our attitude we're shifting our attitude in our in our situations God and we're, we're going to begin to sing your praises God we're going to to begin to to shift our mindset that the people around us, God, will be able to know that my God is still good. Um, God, that even when things are looking like they're falling apart, we thank you so much for being such a good God. And I ask that you would just give somebody um, the courage, the strength, and everything that they need to be able to still profess your name as good, even in such a dark situation, God. There's no way we can do that without you. So God, right now, I'm asking that you would allow the person that's trying to do it without you to realize that the secret sauce to this thing is to do it with you. God, if we do it with you and we allow you to take over us and we allow ourselves just to give ourselves completely to you, you will help us through the moments. You will help us through the dark times. You will help us to be able to praise through the rough moments. And God, we just say thank you for being such a great God, for such a caring God, for allowing us to have another Sabbath day and for bringing us together. Um, oh, <laughs> just thank you. Um, and I ask that you would allow the rest of us to have, a, all of us to have a good rest of this Sabbath day. In your precious name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Um, I did want to encourage Nate, and I don't know if this is fine. I had just a few um, 
things I wanted to share um, from our church from Grace. And if you had some things that you wanted to share from Temple of Praise, um, I want to encourage you guys. I'm going to start a little bit backwards, if that's okay. Um, on Thursdays, because we're in this space of worship and pushing into God pres God's presence. On Thursdays at 9 p.m., we're doing this thing called Throne Room Worship. It's literally just a creative space of being able to worship. I'm sorry, I'm going out of order, but on Thursdays at 9 p.m. on Facebook Live and this same call-in number for those who are called in. Uh, Willie will be there. We all, amen, praise the Lord for him. Um, he is going to be singing. This past Thursday, he sang. Um, while he sang, I was painting. I am not a painter. I don't want to take long to for this, but I'm not a painter. But what it is, is giving creative ways to get into God's presence. And so we did a live painting and you can see the explanation at the end. If you go to our Facebook page, you can find that but we'll also be there next Thursday. But I want to encourage you to check it out. Um, if you want something to do the Sabbath afternoon, if you want to try to get in God's presence, that might be something that you can check out to watch. Uh, we want to encourage you on Mondays, we have uh, our Bible studies um, at 7 p.m. Also um, for the youth, we have Bible study at 8 p.m. We're moving that to Zoom. So pay attention to the flyers on our page. We're moving that to Zoom. We're not going to do it on Instagram anymore. We're going to have it more interactive on Zoom. We want to encourage you to join the Move My Body uh, movement. Um, our videos are posted on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. The power calls, uh, we want to make sure that you are there for that 6 a.m. And then 12 a.m. on Facebook. I mean, 12 p.m. I won't be here at 12 a.m. 12 p.m. on Facebook on Wednesdays, we'll be doing PT time, which is prayer and testimonies. So you want to make sure you hop on if you have, many of you have requests on Thursdays. That's, I mean, on, sorry, on Wednesdays at 12 that's all we're doing is praying. So if you have a request, I can pray for each person. Um, right now it's getting late, so we when we're in, but twelve and uh, on twelve noon we can pray for you on Wednesday specifically. And then I already mentioned Thursday, and then we know the Saturday um, flow. We'll be back here again next week uh, with another special guest, Nate. Yeah, no, just want to um, offer a reminder to to our family about our, our Wednesday night recharge um, at 7 p.m. And so on our church's page, you can Google the Praise page, you can find us on there. Um, we're going to be starting a, a Bible study on Friday evenings at 7 p.m. Um, and then on, we're going to be starting three Bible studies actually that will be taking place on alternate Fridays, one for our young adults, one for our youth, and then one for, um, for everybody. And so we will make that information available to you um, through our one call and text stream. Outside of that, uh, thank you for, for being here. Church family, we, we miss you, love you, and praying for you. All right. Um, Renee, did you want to say anything to your churches as well? This is lovely. We have four churches represented here today. Just want to to thank you all for for getting on the line with us uh, today and and uh, kind of shifting uh, your schedule and uh, you know waiting that additional on uh, the line. Just a reminder, um, we we're, we're going to reconvene on Tuesday um, at six o'clock on our prayer line with our prayer meeting, uh, and then I want those from Calvary to jump on the line also on Wednesday. We're going to start a brand new series. Um, we're going to be begin having a prayer meeting as as one again. But again, thank you. I love you. I can't wait to, to connect with you. Joining us, we hope that you had an awesome time in the Lord. And remember, you might hate it here, but somebody indeed does need you. We love you. God bless you. <laughs>